Okay, good morning, Hapag High School community. Wonderful to see everybody virtually here this morning. Today is Thursday, May 14th. It is our 63rd day uh, away from students, though we do have some students here today that, we, that I've had the privilege of getting to know a little bit um, over the last year and a half or so and excited to bring them on. And they happen to be joined by their parents who are well-known community members as well. Um, we will be keeping things light this morning with some fun questions, but we will be grilling them about some very important Long Island specific questions that will help us understand a little bit about uh, what they bring to the table. But right now I want all, everybody on the call to just wave hello. I'm going to, uh, uh, well, I haven't done it yet, so you guys are waving, but that, that's good. You keep waving, uh, <laughs> presenting the entire screen so that people can wave hello to everybody. Three, it should be going two. All right, everybody say hello. Hi, wave. All right. Hi. Good morning. So we got some board members and their, and their children here today. Uh, and excited to get to know everybody a little bit more. We will start with a quick round of hellos. Let's start with the Fort Meyer household. Good morning, Hot Buck High School. Good morning. Good stuff. Now the White Horse household. Good morning, Hot Buck. Happy Thursday. Hope everyone has a good day and enjoys the weather later a little bit. Good stuff. Mrs. Ferrara. Good morning, Hot Buck High School. It is great to be with you. Enjoy this beautiful day. Christy. Good morning, Hi, Pog. Um, thank you guys for coming on. It's so nice to see you. Have a great day. We miss you. The Buscarino family. Morning, Hot Pog. Enjoy this beautiful weather today. Morning. What's up, Mackenzie? Maria. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's going to have a wonderful day. Um, it's nice to see students again. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Awesome. And Ruthie. Morning, Hop Hog. We miss you all. Missing all the kids. Enjoy the day. Very good. Very good. All right. So we got some very intense questions that we got to ask here to get to know you. Uh, the first is, and this tells us a lot about how you begin your day. Um, are you a coffee or a tea family, household, person? How does it go down in the Fort Myer household? Tea, definitely. Hot or iced. Right there every morning. There you go. You're ready to go. Caroline, what about you? I would do tea, not very often, but definitely not coffee. Got it, got it. And you're going to have to fight like crazy to not go to Dunkin' Donuts every day when you move <laughs> north, all right? It's going to be a challenge. Joe. So we're all coffee all morning, and then later in the day, I drink more coffee and my wife goes to tea. Nice. I could drink coffee right before bed and still fall asleep, so I don't know if it has any effect anymore. I blame you a little bit because I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> The, the 7 a.m. We're, we're just going to drink three cups of coffee while we greet students. Routine. Much, yes. Yeah. yeah. Just to keep the body warm, too, when we're sitting out there in 20 degree weather. I'll take it. I'll take it. Joy. Yes. It's mostly it's mostly a tea uh, time, but uh, there are some days where coffee needs to uh, be had in large quantities. Yes, I understand. <laughs> Christy. So I used to be coffee and until I joined Hop Hog and then I moved to tea, which is so surprising because Chris uh, all day long, uh, probably three times during this whole call. So uh, tea, but only on rare occasions. Yes. All right. What's the Buscarino family do for their morning beverage of choice? Morning is definitely coffee. Yes. Yeah. I, I, when I work overnights, I go to tea though. Really? Yeah. I would, see, I feel like I would double down and do like double espressos if I was doing <laughs> All right. Mackenzie, what do, you, do you have a, a routine yet? Uh, no, I don't really drink either. No? Are you one of the, the fancy drinks in the morning people that stop at Starbucks before the high school or no? No. Yeah. That's always my favorite. It's, it's like 20 <laughs> degrees out and you see these iced coffees with like these red iced coffees coming in the building. You're just like, what is that? <laughs> Maria, what's that, what's going on in your household? Coffee or tea? Oh, definitely coffee. Um, actually, through the coffee maker, I set a programmable so it's up because my husband leaves early, so this way he, um, you know, he has coffee to take with him. Um, we use Bastello. Nice, nice. I would expect nothing, nothing less. Ruthie. So, like, I'm missing my days of my early morning drive through the Dunkin' Donuts extra large hot green tea with two sweet and lows. And I didn't used to even have to order it because when I drove up, 
in the morning, they would just say, we got it. And I would drive through. But now I make my own green tea. Sweet and low still? Yeah, yeah. I'm addicted. All right, all right. Now we got you loosened up a little bit. Now you're gonna put in your breakfast order, okay? So what this means, this activity that we do once in a while, I think it really tells a lot. Like, are you a sesame bagel person or are you a deli si sandwich? Like, it tells us a lot about who you are. So in a second, we're gonna go down the list and you have to put in your breakfast order. You do it as quickly and as confidently as possible. I'll start it off in just a second. And just remember, if you're in a New York deli or in a New York bagel place, and you, you, I learned this early on, I think even before high school, if I stumbled, then I, then the pressure just got a lot worse as people looked at me funny. So just be ready to go. And Caroline, you're gonna be first, so you gotta be ready, okay? So my order is three eggs, turkey and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, and today I'll have a whole wheat bagel. Caroline. I'm not that fast, but... Um, we'll Start staring, egg. everybody. <laughs> um, egg bagel, two eggs and cheese, and... Some some meat, uh, bacon. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Caroline. Gary. Uh, Western omelet, home fries, sausage, rye toast. There you go. That's a good order, James. Well, James, James. likes apples and oatmeal. Um, I'm ordering the BEC SPK today. I want a roll. Feel awesome. like a roll. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, on a roll, huh? Okay, Stacy, what's up? We're gonna we're doing breakfast orders. Just be ready to go to put in your breakfast order. Okay, perfect. Joy, sorry, I was having trouble getting on. No sweat, Joy. Grilled cheese and bacon on an egg, everything bagel. Christy, everything bagel, lightly toasted, lightly buttered. Consistent, consistent, Mackenzie. Uh, egg sandwich on a roll with. One egg over hard and bacon. Nice. Mr. Buscarino. Bacon, egg, and cheese, home fries on a roll. Nice. Maria. Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese on a, a egg everything, but um, mayo on one side and ketchup on the other. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Ruthie. Uh, and everything bagel, toasted dry with vegetable ice cream cheese. Excellent. And the Weisberg household, let's go Stacy first. Uh, I love uh, bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. Salt, pepper, ketchup. Awesome. <laughs> Brooke, what's uh, up? Hi. <laughs> a plain flagel with egg and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. <laughs> You're ready to go. You're ready to go. So most of you ordered the ketchup. What do you put? Uh, do you put ketchup on eggs? Because you, you embedded it in your order. Let's do a quick, we're going to do a quick sh screenshot of this. Raise your hand in a second. If you are a person that puts uh, ketchup on their eggs, so raise your hand now if you put your ketchup on your eggs. Whoa, it's just me in the Weisberg household, and we got thumbs down. Like it's not well, even. I'm thumbs side. Anything. It's only on sandwiches, Cook. Joe, in, in, if there's anything I feel like I've tried to impart on you, it's either your yes or no. There's no in between in life. You just got to be yes and or no. Know, it's always more complicated than that. So. <laughs> got it. All right. How can it be complicated cool. with ketchup? It, it, yeah, you put it on it. That's the the right answer. Um, yeah, we've had some people on sandwiches put it on, and not and not, not when you eat in plain. So I could take that. All right, so we're gonna do one last one on bro broccoli or carrots, and you could describe how you prefer to have either broccoli or carrots. So cooked with whatever, you gotta you know, elaborate on it a little bit. Caroline, are you broccoli or carrot person? Describe it a little bit. Definitely broccoli, um, steamed, plain, that's how I like it. Beautiful. Gary? Same, broccoli, steamed, carrots have no reason to exist. Got it. <laughs> that's harsh. That's, see, Joe, that's what I'm talking about, yes or no? James, what about you? Well, James likes carrots. Um, so does my dog. Oh, clearly. He heard carrots, so now he's excited. Uh, I'm all about the broccoli, though. And I, I like it more. I think it's just better. You can eat it with some ranch dressing on the side. You can cook with it. It's more usable in recipes. Um, so, yeah, broccoli. That's my correct Indy. Indy, what do you prefer, Indy? Indy's all about the carrots. But yeah. he really, he really doesn't care. But if you give him cheese, he'll spit out anything else afterwards. So he, 
He likes ketchup too, if that helps. That does. He's in. He's in the club. Joy. Okay, so raw carrots with hummus and cooked broccoli, sauteed garlic, oil, uh, and And Sambuco, my black lab, loves raw carrots. Mm -hmm. Christy. Uh, Same as Joy. Broccoli sauteed with garlic and oil, uh, but I also broccoli fresh with ranch dressing. Nice. Bus Green Owl household. Um, I like carrots with either hummus or ranch dressing and uh, broccoli cooked. I don't know how you make it. I don't know how you make the broccoli. Uh, I'm definitely broccoli, a little bit of olive oil on the barbecue, and raw carrots with ranch dressing. Excellent. Maria? Yeah, I'm totally with Joy. Totally with her with the broccoli. Nice. How do you how do you uh, how do you make it happen? What's that? You you just do the garlic and you 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 cook it up. Where do you cook it on the grill? Where do you where do you make yours? No 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 no. I just use a frying pan. I saute it with some garlic, olive oil. Um, sometimes I'll throw it in with small shells and some olives and Parmesan cheese. Nice, nice. Sounds delicious. Uh, Ruthie, I am right there with Mr. Bescarino. I'm I'm right on that grill. I like it well done but broccoli on the grill. I'm going to have to try that this weekend. Weisberg household. And, um, I like carrots with hummus or ranch too, but I also like broccoli. But I think carrots. <laughs> I like to burn broccoli. That's my favorite. Uh, nice. I and I burn it. And I love spaghetti alley oil, but I'll put broccoli instead of broccoli rob. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't really, I thought like when I was growing up, I thought broccoli rob and broccoli were the same thing. And it was like yeah. only somewhat recently that I realized they're not at all part of the same plant. So anyway. Um, all right. So good stuff. The question of the day is going to be about favorite movie, but before we do that, we have to go to our correspondence. And the nice thing, I think there's some connection to the correspondence and the people on this call is because the, the three, uh, uh, community members, the adults, board members, I see, feel like I see at every function we have. So whether it's sports or arts, uh, or I guess cooking classes, we have you, we see you at these things wherever they are. So you'll fit right in with our correspondence here this morning. Uh, Mr. Whitecourt, sports update. Yes. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Jort Report. We start off today by correcting uh, or adding an addendum to yesterday's report. I let you know that the there's still nothing really going on in sports generally, but ESPN released their list of seven, the 74 greatest NBA players of all time, and I said I didn't know why they chose 74. Did a little bit more research and realized yeah. that NBA has been around for 74 years, so that made sense. Should have known that, or you should have corrected me yesterday. Anyway, I should have corrected you. There's a lot of going on on yesterday's meeting. Though, so. <laughs> I will be getting to uh, to some opinions on that list, but a couple other things that have been going on. Some NBA teams have started opening their facilities for voluntary workouts. Not in New York, though, but some states have been starting to allow that. And baseball players and the owners have agreed to general terms to uh, start a shortened season in July, but the financials are still getting in the way. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch tonight, um, I'm sure Joe Tasman will be watching this. The 2002 uh, college football game between Florida State and Miami. Mm. Um, as you know, Tasman's a big Miami fan. Um, so, And that game ends well for Miami. That's all I'll say if you want to watch it. And on this day in history, I'm sticking with America's pastime because I still miss it dearly, and I'm sticking with the Yankee theme. On this date in 1967, Mickey Mantle hit his 500th home run against Baltimore. And I told you yesterday that he retired as the number two all-time Yankee in home runs. Today's trivia is not really so much trivia, but it's more of your opinion uh, to anyone on the call who's a basketball fan. But I'm going to give you the top ten from this ESPN list, and you let me know if you agree with it. Yep. Uh, number ten was Shaq. Nine was Kobe. Eight was Tim Duncan. Seven was Larry Bird. Six, Wilt Chamberlain. Five, Magic Johnson. Four, Bill Russell. Three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number two, LeBron James. And number one, Michael Jordan. Any opinions on that? Yeah, and I'm presenting so you can raise your hand if you have an opinion. Mr. White, of course, you can call on anybody. <laughs> you really you really hit this question well. I've, I've always known this whole crew to be very staunch NBA fans. So where the uh, 
Ruthie, what do you got? Yeah, so like I really feel that LeBron James should should really move up a little bit. I'm from Ohio, and I, I feel you know. Well, LeBron, you, you can move up to one, so you would put him ahead of Jordan. I guess I would. <laughs> okay. I respect wow, the opinion. Um, Joy is giving a thumbs down. Thumbs down. All right. I think we can come. I think we should just do a segment on this because I could go all day on this. And I, and I, uh, we'll do a separate show later. We'll do it on the the after show podcast. (laughs) Exactly. Joy, go for it. You, Joy, you're muted. All right. We got music today. Good. Today is National Chicken Dance Day. Interesting. Um, It is actually Dance Like a Chicken, if you remember the chicken dance. Um, Anybody who uh, wants to get out there and (laughs) dance like a chicken, today is a great day to do it. Um, It is also um, National Buttermilk Biscuit Day. And if you don't have buttermilk in the house, it's easy enough to make. You have one cup of milk and a tablespoon of white vinegar. There's your buttermilk. Add it to the Bisquick. You're good to go. Um, Today is also National Decency Day. And uh, this day came about in 2004, uh, where actually students, you'll be interested in this, is something that youth and community can uh, definitely get involved in. But it uh, students band together to talk about what does it mean to be decent. Hmm. Um, and so there is actually um, a website, which is decency.today, uh, that you can check out all kinds of ways to be decent, but um, some of which include active listening, being more understanding of those around you, and having compassion. So um, I wanted to end our days with um, National Decency Day because I think it's really important, especially now during this time, that we show compassion to one another. Beautiful. Very good stuff. Christy, with weather. So today's high is going to be 61. Sunrise is at 536. And sunset is at 802. So around your AP exams and your classes, try to get outside today because it is going to rain on and off for the next three days. Um, not going to be windy, so it's going to be pretty beautiful. On another note, the National Hurricane Center is tracking its first area of possible development in the Atlantic for a possible early hurricane season. So a little crazy out there. Um, and But the good news is the traffic at the circle is there's none. So you can get right through that circle, except the gates are closed. So you actually can't. But there's no <laughs> traffic. <laughs> All right. You have to go through the south lot. Do a little round. South lot looks empty. South lot's empty. Okay, that's good. Maria, what's for dinner? Uh, for dinner tonight, we're going to have eggplant palm. Oof. Yeah, keep it simple. Actually, uh, White Horse brought up Tasman earlier. He he claims to have the best eggplant palm uh, this side of the Mississippi. So we're going to have to put that into a competition at some point. I'll take them all. Right. All right, that's what I'm talking about, Maria. That's why that's why you are on this show, Ruthie. What's going on in the arts world? Okay, so uh, in history, in 1954, the Pajama Game opened today on Broadway, featuring Bob Fosse's choreography and uh, George Abbott and Jerome Robbins directed that one together, and they won five Tony Awards that year for that particular show. Featured some great music, um, Hey There. Fernando's Hideaway. Um, so that's that's in terms of history. The now news is we just found out that Broadway probably will not open at least until Labor Day. Although those in the trenches are saying per- potentially January. So, um, but but the news came out that it definitely won't open before Labor Day, which is kind of sad. But exciting news is that on Broadway HD, the new Hamilton movie is coming out, which I'm really super excited about, um, July 3rd. So I'm wondering if everybody's TV is going to crash on that day (laughs) because that's going to be a hot day. So that's really exciting. But there's lots to do. You can watch 
so many live streams. The Globe is doing a live stream of, of Shakespeare work and the National Theater does a live stream every Thursday that they change, you can watch. Um, and the Met, Metropolitan Opera, every night at 7.30 is, is live streaming another opera. So go for it, lots of good stuff. Awesome, really good stuff. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think uh, Disney made a, made a major power play in terms of uh, Hamilton. They I'm just, uh, who I think every house in America is going to have Disney Plus in pretty pretty shortly. Um, right. All right. So speaking of that, let's let's do one last question, um, and I got to choose between them. And I think I think we're going to stick with favorite movie, um, and we're only going to ask the people that haven't answered this yet. So uh, the the Fort Myer household, the the Buscarino household. Ruthie, I think we got you on this one once before, so we'll we'll leave it. And then Weisberg Household. So you got to. I'm curious, what are your favorite movies, and what have you been watching potentially that uh, over these last few weeks that has been in interesting? So feel feel like you can take it either way, either favorite movie or something you've been watching recently that you uh, you've loved. Caroline, up first, go for it. Favorite movie. Um, I definitely haven't been watching this recently, but like my favorite movie every year, I watch Home Alone the day after Thanksgiving. It's kind of like a tradition thing. So I would say that definitely favorite. That's a great tradition. That's good. That's really good. Gary. Uh, probably almost anything Ridley Scott, um, Alien, Gladiator, uh, unless it's holiday, unless it's Christmas time, and then it's a wonderful life. Nice. Very classic. Mackenzie. Uh, I don't really have a favorite movie. Like I just like kind of watch anything. But uh, I like the, my brothers watch like the Marvel series a lot. So I guess I like that. All right. Good. Into Marvel. Good. Good. A lot of, a uh, lot of hours with Marvel movies recently. That's good stuff. Buscarino, Mr. Buscarino. I'm all about my superheroes as well. I like uh, all things superhero. And I would say recently uh, Aiden and I started watching the Marvel series in order. All of them. So... Now, I got a question about that, actually, because uh, I've heard you can watch it in two different orders and depend. you can do it both ways. One, the year they came out, and two is the, the order that they tell the story. So which order are you, you watching them in? We're doing the storyline order. Interesting. And it's like 20-something movies, right? It's Yeah, we're, we, we had to take a little break. I actually had to get some work done around the house. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess 20 times six hours a piece is, uh, is a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, very good. Cool. And do you have a favorite superhero? Uh, I would say Spider-Man. Nice choice. Um, all right. The Weisberg household, favorite movies? Um, Beauty and the Beast, King's Men, 13 going on 30. And then I like Marvel. <laughs> Excellent. I love the little order there. That's good. Yeah. You think the is number one, though? Yeah, always been. Good. Good. Uh, Mrs. Weisberg. My two all time favorites are Clueless and Mean Girls. Clueless. <laughs> Clueless, high school, fun. I love that movie. And Mean Girls, my favorite part is when they have the mean girl eating bars, telling them it's going to make her skinny and it makes her fat. It's just mm. fun. Just brings me back to high school. I went to a very big high school with 900 kids in my graduating class, so it was fun. And wow. interesting series we've been watching lately is Waco. I don't know it's if anyone or that's TV really show, good. but that's been really interesting to see the whole story. It tells know. about Waco, Texas, and and the uh, the cult the stuff that went on there. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy. What is it on Netflix or what is Netflix, it on? Right? Yeah, Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's really good. It is. Cool. I might have to uh, to watch it. I can remember that very, very well, kind of watching the news every day, seeing what was going to happen and being one of the first like major news stories of my life, I think. I don't, what, when, when was that? Who knows the years that when that was? It was 80. Waco? It was like the yeah. 80s, right? 84? Let me see. Mm. It's a crazy story. Yeah, it's wild. Joe, Joe and Chris, were you born then? Well, it depends. I might be have a, a false memory of this. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I I watched uh, something. 93. 93, it looks like. So yeah, I was I was, oh, was 93. I was, I was born. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So I think we're gonna round it out today. Everybody gets to give a shout out to people um, that they want to give a shout out to. 
everybody that has this prompt takes it in different directions. So sometimes people give uh, shout outs to people directly in their life. Sometimes it's to groups of people. Sometimes it's to particular types of workers. Uh, you go you kind of give your shout out in whatever way uh, it makes sense. Um, and, uh, and, I'll, and I'll start it out. I think uh, a lot of attention is being paid to frontline doctors, people who are working directly with uh, COVID patients. And, and we've given those shout outs a lot here. I think I've been thinking a little bit too about um, other medical workers who are supporting people who aren't necessarily experiencing COVID, but the challenges of supporting people who are struggling with other health issues and uh, want to pay particular shout out to them to keep, keep everybody else healthy as well as we're going through this. So shout out to, to doctors and nurses who are taking care of people without COVID in the wings of COVID. And it must be a very challenging situation to do as well. Uh, Caroline, go for it. Um, I'll give a shout out to all the seniors. I think that we all wish we could be together for like our last two months of school, but we're holding in and we'll finish strong. Beautiful. Thank you, Caroline. Gary. Okay. I've had the privilege of being able to volunteer at a rescue mission and food bank in Huntington since I retired a couple of years ago. So I'd like to shout out to all the volunteers there and the director, Kim, um, for really stepping it up and helping the Huntington community in this time. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Joe. Yeah, so in addition to healthcare workers, anyone volunteering, um, all teachers that have had their, their jobs flipped upside down, and police officers and firefighters that are out there still doing the job every day, um, you know, the world doesn't slow down because we're in a pandemic. They still have to protect us. So thank you um, to all those, everyone I just named. Um, I could, every day I have to stop because I could probably keep going, but shout out to all of you on the call as well, because I know everyone's going through this and, um, you know, we'll hopefully see you all soon. Joy. I just wanted to give a shout out to, um, anyone in our community who has lost a family member or a friend due to this horrible illness. Um, you know, our hearts are with you and uh, we're sending you uh, virtual hugs. Beautiful, Christy. So I wanted to give a shout out to all of our first responders that traveled into New York from other parts of the country and left behind children, children and spouses that I'm sure they missed terribly, but um, it was a very selfless act. Awesome. Buscarino household. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the people that still go to work every day. I think that takes a lot of courage, especially in a time like this. So, yeah. Mr. My shout out is going to be to uh, my wife, Nicole, and all of the healthcare workers at St. Francis Hospital. Beautiful. Maria. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Silvana. Um, she believed she had the virus, um, you know, never officially confirmed. It, it has been confirmed. She said her antibodies are really, really high. So she wants to find out about becoming a plasma donor. Hmm. Beautiful. Ruthie. Um, I give a shout out to, um, doctors and nurses and, and healthcare workers that are working, but to their families who, um, you know, I have students who's, who are at home alone because their parents are are helping other people and you know then they come home and uh, there's just so much there so give a shout out to those great weisberg household um i want to give a shout out to all my teachers i think i said this last time too but they're really especially the past two weeks they've been going above and beyond with making sure that we're all okay it's really nice. great mrs weisberg and I also want to give a shout out to the seniors this year. I do feel really bad that it's ending this way. Uh, I think that their resilience and spirit and everyone in the community has been so positive for them and everyone knows what they're going through. And it's, it is a really beautiful place to be part of in Hopbox, seeing everyone kind of come together and working together. And I know that they'll overcome it. And, you know, this is just a little blip in our life and hopefully when they grow up, it'll be, well, we're the class of 2020. Everyone will be like, oh, look at that, look what they went through. <laughs> yes, yeah, very good. So as we conclude here today, I think we have uh, a one 
prereq for ending the day. Uh, Mrs. Ferrara mentioned that today was the National Chicken Dance Day. So you can either, everybody's being presented right now. So you can either do come back on and just do a quick wave goodbye, or you could chicken dance it up. I'm hoping everybody chicken dances on the way out here. But it was wonderful to see you, Mackenzie, uh, Caroline, Brooke. Great to see you, Mr. Fort Meyer, Mr. Buscarino, Mrs. Weisberg. Thanks for joining us. And the crew, thank you. Ruthie, you've been elevated to a full-time gig if you want it. Otherwise, we'll have you on a couple days a week and it'll be great, all right? Uh, bye, everybody. Caroline, where's your chicken dance? <laughs> bye, guys. I don't know. Look. Mackenzie, it's only going to be on YouTube forever. We'll see you guys. Peace out, everybody. Have a great day. Awesome. Bye, guys.